Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Tuesday, the 23rd of February, 2016. This is episode 169 on lockdown. Crafts and six and three and come sit with me. Before I say anything else, let me just preface with saying I just recorded this and then found that the file was corrupted when I tried to import it into my editing software. So, and then it wouldn't even let me open it on the computer. So hopefully <laughs> this one works and I don't forget anything important because that always happens when I have to record a second time, which doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's very frustrating. Anyway, not this past week, but the week before, I totally forgot to tell you last week. Um, Steve went to Home Depot for a few things and I was like, hey, since you're there, it would kind of be nice if I had a door, or a knob that locked with the key to my craft room. And now I have one. I had a knob that had a lock on it, but it was the kind where you could like put your thumb against and then turn your thumb and it would unlock, which my kids totally figured out after we had lived here for, I don't know, a week. Um, but now I have a lock that you need a key for. And when we were little, my mom installed a locking knob on our bathroom so that we couldn't just barge in when she was taking baths. And she put the key above her door, above the bathroom door. And we never used it. So I thought that would be a fine place to put the spare key or one of the keys for the knob. The other is on my actual key ring for like my vehicle and stuff. No, no. It was good for about a week, and then somehow Mara got in my craft room. I am pretty sure that even standing on the table that was pulled out of her bedroom, she was not tall enough to reach up there. But Gabriel is. So, so that key no longer lives there. But other than that one time, my kids have not been able to let themselves in my craft room, so my craft room has stayed pretty, let's not say clean. Clean would be a lie, because my kids are still in here when I'm crafting, and that means they touch things and move things around and make little disasters. But it's so much nicer walking into my craft room and having it the way I left it the night before rather than as a disaster. So it's very exciting for me. Anyway, knitting related stuff. We have a craft along going on right now. It is for tube socks and um, there are no restrictions on size or pattern or weight of yarn or even what type of craft. There's a crocheted pair in there. Um, knitting is accepted, obviously. So I have finished pair. I was very close last week. I only had 10 rounds and the bind off to go. So this is, here's one, here's the other, finished. And ends woven in. I've woven ends on both of my finished projects this week. Yeah, all of the ends woven in. Anyway, so this is, um, it's like an, is it an OB toe? I still didn't look that up. Um, so the big toe is separate from all the little toes. The yarn I used for this is Pagewood Farms Denali Base in the Marine Girl colorway for the toe pocket for the four toes. And then the main color is Color Me Twisted in the colorway Where's the Kaboom? And it's a 8525 blend. So um, the pattern, the pattern is a graduated rib where you start with two rib troughs, I guess, and then go to four and then six and then all the way around is two by two ribbing. And the the round count and stuff for that is on the project page, which is G's 2016 for these. Um, and I did end up binding off in purple. This is BFL by Fleece Artist, no colorway name. 
and I don't remember the makeup because I used this a really long time ago for lots of different projects. But I don't remember the makeup. Obviously BFL, but other than that I couldn't tell you. Yeah, so these socks are finished and finish these on Monday after the podcast. And then on Wednesday maybe, I don't know, someday when I was driving my children somewhere, Gabriel said, Mom, it would be really cool if you made me long socks, like knee-high socks. And I said, Gabriel, I was going to make you long socks and you told me to stop because they were long enough. He said, oh yeah, well, maybe my third grade Christmas socks can, can be really long socks. I said, yeah, your third grade Christmas socks can be really long socks because I was going to make these long and he told me to stop, even though he knows he can't have them until Christmas. So whatever. First pair finished. Um, like I was saying, there's no size restriction. My next pair of tube socks is going to be for an adult. To be fair though, she can sometimes buy her shoes in the children's section. So it's not a, yeah, still kind of cheating, still kind of children sized, but you can make them, you know, any size, as long as it's socks without a heel and not yoga socks. There is a prize for that knit along. It's a skein of yarn, which I don't have out. The knit along goes through the end of March and you can make as many pair of tube socks as you want, post each one separately, and you can use whatever pattern you want. It doesn't have to be mine. It doesn't have to be my recipe either. It can be any, any. I also finished, not for the knit along, but you know, since we're talking about finished things, I finished the My Zombie Boyfriend Socks by Elizabeth Jeremiah. And this is also the Patriot Farm Denali sock. That is not even the interesting part of the sock. Do, 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 do. So I have one sock on the blocker as you would normally see it. And then I have the other one sideways so you can see the, um, the cable pattern, which is lovely. I think this totally makes sense as a guy pattern or a girl pattern. Of course girls could wear it, but let's be serious. Most guys are much more picky about patterns than girls. There aren't a, a lot of guys who are like, oh yeah, totally lace socks. That'll be perfect. So I think this is an acceptably masculine pattern. Um, this yarn is not, I think you can kind of see it there. I feel like it's showing up a little bit gray on the camera, but it's definitely blue and green and yellow. A little bit gray based, but not as gray as it's showing up on my screen. Anyway, last week I was here-ish. I removed my stitch marker after I finished recording because I was finished recording, so I guessed. I know that I had worked a little bit of the foot, but not a lot last week, so I finished the foot and the toes. I did not even look at the patterns instructions for the toes. Didn't even look. Worked the pattern to an appropriate length, started toe decreases. So I don't know what type of toe the pattern calls for, because I didn't read it. Sorry. And um, to reiterate, the pattern called for a short row heel, and I used the fish lips kiss because that's the particular short row heel that I like making. And also all of the socks that I'm knitting are on US size 1 2.25 millimeter needles. So works in progress. I worked on the Len Jerry some more, which is by Sarah Burkhart Abrams. And I was right here last week. So some inches on there. I don't know. I'm not really good at just judging how many inches are, but you know, I got a little bit of progress, not as much as I wanted. It was kind of a busy-ish week. Um, Friday, Steve's mom visited and I didn't really get to knit at all that day because when I woke up, I thought that I was going to have maybe half hour of picking up my house to do. And then I got up and Mara had destroyed our library. She had pulled a ton of books off the shelf 
and she had cut up a whole bunch of papers in the dining room and I don't even know how she made such a mess and she tried to bake cake by herself she didn't use the oven but like she tried to mix cake and stuff I don't know how she made such a mess in the couple hours that I was sleeping after she had woken up I mean that's my own fault but still I was like why why today of all days so there was no knitting on Friday there was only cleaning and then yesterday I was pretty sick and Sunday we ran a few errands. So less knitting time than I feel like I normally have. I don't know. Um, so definitely two of those three days I barely worked on, barely touched the shawl. And I didn't touch it at all on Friday, I don't think. Maybe one row. But anyway, making progress, it's going on. And I can tell that it's making progress because in my bowl, the yarn doesn't touch the sides. It doesn't crowd my little bead, um, my bead thingy. What is this? Canister? Container? I don't know. Uh, the beads are from Bead Wrangler, They're, which is 7beads.com. And uh, there's like mm, a third-ish of the container left. The yarn that I'm using is Leading Men Fiber Arts, the fishbowl colorway on the Ghost Light base, which is 80% super wash merino and um, super fine merino, not super wash, and 20% silk. So it's super lovely to work with and is going to be a super gorgeous shawl when I finish it. I didn't mess up this week at all. Yay! So hopefully I don't mess up this coming week because that would be scary. Um, yeah, it's been only forward progress on the shawl, which is exciting. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in half of a repeat a day now. I'm just feeling a little under the weather because our weather can't figure out again whether it wants to be hot or cold. On Friday it was 60s. Yesterday it was like 30s. So I'm not feeling so hot. But as long as I work on it a little bit every day, it it grows, right? That's my goal. A little bit every day and a lot of it on days when I can handle it. I also worked on the Josie socks, which is a pattern by Jenna Meyer. And here is the first one. Yes, the first one. So I finished the pattern repeat on the sock and you can tell it's quite a long pattern repeat because it goes from the toe to right here. I finished the pattern repeat and I decided, because I had the needles free from the tube socks, I decided that I would rather work these socks two at a time instead of one at a time because I feel like I could have second sock syndrome with this pattern. The pattern repeat is super duper long and it's very intricate very few of the rows are the same. Um, it's just, it's a lot of work, which is not bad. But I worry that I might have second sock syndrome if I don't work them at the same time. So I finished the pattern repeat. I put it on circular needles and I cast on the second sock and got two rows into the pattern on that. So once I finish this pattern repeat, I will work both socks at the same time on, um, on circular needles and get it finished that way. I don't think that this sock is going to be finished, this pair is going to be finished by the end of the month. It's one of my on the blanket projects and um, I think about half of my blanket projects this month aren't going to be finished by the end of the month. Totally distracted. I have no idea what I was saying because I had to get up and help Mara. So let's talk about the yarn for the Josie socks. It is Science Monkey Mercantile Faraday Base in the Rosalind Franklin's Overexposed Photo. And I love this color so much. I want all of the things to be knit in this color. Unfortunately, he's not dying right now, so can't have it to knit all the things. I also worked on the fiber from Lorraine, 
And this is all I have left to ply. And 24 inches or whatever that is attaching it to my spinning wheel. So I am plying it with this do, 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 sparkly, sequiny thread yarn stuff that Lorraine gave me when she gave me the fiber. I used it to ply against the Merlot Fiber Art bat also. And um, I have a little tangle going on over here. So I'm really, really enjoying that ply. And I think I made a really good choice with how I decided to use the color progressions. So I have purple on the on the bobbin right now. The purple's all gone. And the purple was actually pretty even and consistent. I mean, still some thick and thin spots because it was my first foray into, um, into wheel spinning, this project was. But the pink was the first thing that I spun. So the purple is pretty consistent. And then it goes into the pink, which is inconsistent and thick and thin, like goes from a lace weight single all the way up to bulky in some places. Not a lot of bulky places, but there are a few. And then the yellow, I spun mostly thicker, but thick and thin also. Um, so I feel like when it's knit up, it will make sense because it, it will go from less textural to more textural. I'm hoping anyway. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be when it grows up. I'm just plying it and we'll see. But I really, really like the way that it's plying. I think that this was a good, a good choice. I also worked on my Care Bears cross stitch. So here's where I am. I'm almost finished with the outline. This is the picture. So I just have this leg right here, right here to finish outlining. And um, I have half of it half outlined. You can see those half stitches that I have to go back for, but I'm going to work all the way down and then go back up and finish. It's hard to do this mirrored and finish up this arm. And then once I have that, I only have this blue on the nose, which is a little heart. And then I'm finished with this blue color. So that's good. I started, I finished the star buddy. I had half of the outline left to go last week, except the eyes, because I'm going to do all the black at once. Um, so star buddy is almost finished. And I started on this white portion right here, cross stitching that. And how did this back get so messy with this white? I have no idea what happened there. I don't know. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It will be framed or something. But I just looked and it's a mess. It's not very good. Anyway, so I started the white on the tummy and I'm continuing to switch off between colors each day. Again, this project didn't get worked on probably three days this past week, but it's moving forward. And do you want to see something that kind of makes my, I don't know why it makes me happy, but it kind of does. Okay. So see, this bear has two eyebrows. On the pattern, it has two eyebrows. I noticed when I re recorded the first time today that this bear only has one eyebrow. I don't know why that mistake makes me so happy, but it does. So yeah, there's the Care Bear cross stitch. He's coming along. He'll get there eventually. I have some time. Did I tell you that I'm making this for a friend who's having a small human? I have a little bit of time left. And if it's not done when the small human arrives, whatever. As long as it gets done eventually. On a random side tangent, I really want a needle minder because I just keep mine in the side of my Ada when I'm not working with it. See, you see that white? I don't even know how this happened. Um, do I need a needle minder? No, I just want one. 
lot of people show really cute needle minders on their Instagrams and on their podcasts. And I'm like, oh, why not me? Because I'm not willing to buy one. Anyway, so fiber. The last thing that I worked on is the blanket for Steve's mom because she was visiting and I was like, I feel like I should have the blanket with visible progress when she gets here so that you know, she can see that I've been working on it since it was supposed to be her Christmas present and I didn't finish it in time. I'm trying to look for the stitch marker right now. It's hiding. But I have started on the border, which is super exciting. Um, the border is probably going to be 10 or so rounds. I don't know. It'll depend on how, how many rounds I need to get it to be approximately 50 inches by 60 inches. So this is where I was last time you saw it. And I did all of these and it goes all the way around because I'm working in the round. I was going to do the, I was going to do two panels to make two sides longer, but I've decided I'm just going to do that in the border instead of doing panels. And the way that I'm going to do that is on one side, see, I added the other color. On one side, it's single crochet, and on the other, it's double crochet, which I think I set up nicely because in the blanket starts out in the center with 30 rounds of single crochet, and then 20 rounds of half double crochet, and then 10 rounds of double crochet. So I don't feel like it's weird to have single crochet and double crochet around the outside. Maybe, but I don't. Feel that way and the reason why I'm not doing panels is because then I'd be working back and forth and I kind of feel like that would look weird maybe not to anybody but me but I feel like I would think it looked weird and I don't know if I would be comfortable giving someone that so that is my plan for this blanket and I wasn't I'm not sure how I'm going to do the outside I don't think I want to do solid this on the outside, which is bone. It's Karen Simply Soft in the colorway bone. The other color that I used, am using, will use again, I don't know, is autumn red. Um, I'm really sorry. My neighbors, this is why I recorded early, because my neighbors have had people working in their backyard for like three weeks now. How much work do you need people to do in your backyard? Three weeks every day, even on weekends. I think they take one day off of the week, but I'm really sorry if you can hear that in the background. I know that it picks up when I'm Skyping. Anyway, I can't even remember what I was saying about this blanket. Um, I don't think I'm going to do solid bone around the outside. I think I'm going to do a few stripes and the hook size that I'm using is J, which is US 10 also, and it's 6.0 millimeters. And I'm just going to work it until it's approximately 50 by 60 inches and call it good. I don't know how much I'm going to work on it this week. I might set it aside and focus on my other projects, but I did work on it last week because she was visiting. I did some modular projects. This is Barn Racing Square number 62. I love this yarn. I used it to knit socks. Um, it was a test knit for Jenna and it was the Frammy socks. I don't know what this yarn is. I have no idea. If I had to guess, I would say a merino silk blend. Um, but I got it from Haley in I think the first package that she, she ever sent me. And it was yarn that she had received from Kimber and it didn't have a tag. I don't remember if it was a swap or what, how Haley got it, but I do remember that it was from Kimber and I just don't know what the yarn is, but I love it. Super duper pretty. I did square number 18 on my miter square blanket. It is, is there a stroll sport from Knit Picks? It's definitely from Knit Picks and it's a sport weight. And I want to say it's Stroll. And I can't remember if it's in Wave Heather or Stream Heather. It's one of the colors that I used in my Totoro mittens. It's a sport weight, so I um, I kept the same needle size, but I, instead of picking up 17 stitches like I normally would per side, 
I picked up either 13 or 14 and it fits in really well with the rest of the blanket as far as size goes. It might be a tiny bit small, but I don't think that it will seem that way once I pick up on the other on the sides. On the other two sides, I think it'll look just like all the other squares. I did a hexapuff in that color too, in that yarn. Um, I only did four hex puffs this week. It's not very good. So I'm up to 480. I did one celebratory when I finished the tube socks. And this is yarn from Christina. So I striped the green and the pink, the leftovers. The pink has pearl ridges in it. And then here's a puff that is half yarn from Haley. And then the other half I think is just ZK yarn. It's a lace weight, so I held the two strands together. And the other one, I was trying to use up scraps, just little, little pieces that weren't big enough to do anything in particular with, but were too big to use to sew together the hexapuffs. So there's a self-striping on the bottom, and then this middle section is yarn that I used to make, ow, um, socks for Lucas. I want to say that it was marathon sock, maybe? I can't remember. Project page, somewhere on Ravelry. Um, this yarn, I think, was ZK yarn, and then this at the top was Red Heart Heart and Soul Christmas colorway. Yeah, only four. That's not very good. I need to be better about them, but... But I had other socks that were workable, at work. Now I don't. I don't think I can take any of the projects I'm working on to work. So hexapuffs it'll be when I'm working. Yay! Not when I'm working, when I'm on break at work. Um, what else? I finished reading Written in Red, which was really good, and did have some graphic violence scenes, but not a ton and not inappropriate. The, the book was pretty well done. I didn't think it was atrocious at all. I, I actually really enjoyed it. We went, when we went to the library on Sunday, did I say that we did that in this episode? I don't remember this recording. Um, we went on Sunday and I looked for the second book, but they didn't have it at the library. I know they have it in the system, but I, they didn't have it on the shelf. I don't remember if it's supposed to be at the branch that we went to or if it lives at a different branch. So I'll look it up and put it on hold. Um, but I started Kushiel's Avatar, which is the third book in the trilogy by Jacqueline Carey, and I love it so much. I'm only on chapter three, and I remember the main big thing that happens, but I don't remember any of the little things at all. So I, I looked at the map to see where we were traveling and all over Europe and into Africa. So that's exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to reacquainting myself with Phaedra's story. She is my favorite of the three main characters of the three tril trilogies that are connected. Um, I also listened to some of Death Masks by Jim Butcher. I would say probably 10 chapters because I ran out of podcasts to watch. So I was like, oh, audiobooks. Um, I'm going back to podcasts right now, though, because I have a short list to watch and then more audiobook. And then not reading, but what I wanted to talk about last week I'm going to go over kind of quickly, is um, I want to talk about my Frankenstein socks. So I have been wearing them a lot. I think that I've worn them at least once a week since I finished them, which means they've gotten a lot of wear and um, they're dirty because I've been wearing them all today. And I am hard on them. I'm very, very hard on them. I put them in the washing machine. I wear them to work. I wear them in boots and shoes and wear them with nothing over them around my house, which is how I got a hole in them. I was walking through Mara's room 
and she had a dragon figure, like a ceramic dragon figure, and I caught my foot on the wing because I wasn't paying attention and got a hole in it. Normally when I fix socks, I just use whatever yarn is around because I, you know, I tend to use up my scraps very quickly, but I haven't used any of this yarn and I have these strands hanging around from when I was sewing up all the pieces. So I just grabbed one of those and um, darned the hole. And then since I had the, the yarn in the needle anyway, I decided to fix that part across the instep that I found was kind of tight. So I took my very sharp scissors and I cut it open right here. You can see where it's, um, it looks woven because that's how I darned it back together. So I added all of that fabric to make it less tight and it fits much, much better. I only did it on one sock to test. I'm going to do it on the other sock because this sits so much more comfortably across the top of my foot. I am still thinking about cutting open this part right here where the increases are not, they're kind of binding. So I'm thinking of cutting right there and, um, and then sewing it back together, maybe with a darning technique where it looks woven. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. And the other thing, because this yarn is not super wash, the bottoms have felted, which is nice. It makes it my warmest pair of socks, which is why they've gotten so much wear this winter. But you can see that this is much shorter than this which means that they don't fit so well across the bottom. My heel gets, the heel section gets pulled under my heel. So I'm trying to think of how I wanna lengthen that. I'm probably going to cut it open. And my ideas are either cut it open at the toe and add some fabric there, but it's felted. So I don't think I'll be able to pick up any stitches. So I'm kind of worried about that or opening it here at the heel. Again, it's felted, so I don't know how I would go about fixing that. Um, or maybe because it is less felted at the top of the heel, cut open there, see what I can do about picking up stitches and then adding effectively another wedge to the heel. I haven't decided. I'm kind of thinking that the heel would be a good place to cut because um, because the, the heel, so I have really skinny legs, like really skinny ankles. So this sock is kind of huge <laughs> around my legs. So I'm thinking I might cut the heel, add some length to it. And then since I'll be cutting anyway, cut here and do kind of like a, um, a dart sort of thing. Like just sew up the back and take out that fabric. I don't know yet. <sighs> My poor Frankenstein's cheek socks, they're gonna feel just like Frankenstein. I'll cut and paste it and all over. Anyway, those are my thoughts and also how these socks are holding up. Um, I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string and I will see you next week. Bye.